Welcome back to Views and Vibes. We're talking about living on the d internet. And um, before we went to break, what I wanted to ask you, you know, and this is what I wanted to get into is, our lives seem to be tailor-made by what we take from the internet. You know, like you were saying before break, people can just pick and choose what it is they want. They don't have to be patient and wait for information to come to them. They don't have to listen to other views that other people may have. They look at exactly what they want to look at. They look at their particular news sites, their particular blogs. They look at particular status updates. They, are, they fit themselves into like these small categories and don't even have to be open to other views. What, how is that affecting the way that we not only interact, but the way that we live? I think negatively. Um, I think you can even look at the current political climate mm -hmm. uh, in the country. And I, I just think that a lot of the techno technological advances have allowed people to believe only what they want to believe mm -hmm. and listen to only opinions they agree with. And so it creates very limited opportunities to be uh, open-minded open-minded <laughs> right. and even frankly to be exposed mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. other views right. yeah, yeah because even if you like my big thing is when you read when I read no, news stories I'm very interested to always see the comments mm -hmm. and if you read a news story that's leaning to the right and then everybody from the right is commenting and having to be somebody from the left that puts a comment they, they jump on they yeah attack they, they attack them right. and it's almost like there's not even a forum if you're where people can interact on both sides right. everything is you either read the, the right stories and everybody on the right responds you read the left stories and, but there's no interaction between the two groups and what happens is you end up with this almost like an indoctrination of the people that are reading because if that's all they read that's all they know you can just keep firing information at them mm -hmm. and that's what happens and then we end up with you know huge political rallies as right. you said nonsensical <laughs> <laughs> you right. know just, <laughs> right and, and so I, I was talking to someone the other day who said that this is almost like when the, the state our country is in right now politically it's almost like a civil war civil war with no battles but it's no, no, no it's actual, a civil war no actual being, guns being shot it's a civil war being enacted on the internet yeah. but that's and that's what I want to get to what is I it think no one would know the answer what's the problem what are you so mad at is it is no it the influences is it the influence say. of the internet um, on our culture as a, as a whole that's leading to the separation of, you know, different ideologies. Because well, nobody, nobody, like you said, people aren't talking about, you know, cr talking to each other. Everybody has their views and they're just arguing back and forth, but nobody's li listening. Well, the, 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 the beauty and the tragedy of the Internet is that there's so much information. Mm -hmm. You can literally learn anything you want. Like, if you see a word you don't understand, you can type it and you can get the definition. Right. If there's some historical context you didn't get or a pop, pop culture reference that didn't make sense to you, you can Google it and, you know, bam, it's mm -hmm. there for you. The downside of that is, is that people become very, very selective. So you have people who are already kind of closed-minded and were really reluctant right. to hear different points of view, but now it's so much easier for them just to completely shut those people out that disagree with them. Look for information that backs your worldview. Like if you think the moon landing was fake, there are so many sites on the internet for you that just they will cater to your worldview. Like, well, here's some other facts. <laughs> here's some secret NASA files. You're like, ooh, ooh, I knew I was right. I knew, right. I knew it. You know, right. those people told me I was crazy, but I wasn't. All this stuff on the internet backs me up. Yeah. And, and then they, they argue you down. Exactly. I went to this site. I went to this site. I went right. to this site, and I have proof. Not realizing that, you know, that's the other part is that there's so much bad information yeah. out there too. Mm -hmm. you know. So how do you go about either winning yourself away from you know, just a daily life on the internet or if you're on there, living a better life beyond the internet? Just, it, well, it comes down to common sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to know what, which sites make sense or which sites are you know, reliable, trustworthy information and mm -hmm. which sites aren't. And that line is actually becoming very blurry now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have... Is it commentary or is it news? Well, not even, you know? but even like the news people who do commentary are still putting out bad information mm -hmm. all in the, you know, in the sense of trying to prove things wrong. Right. But you have, you know, that's, that's the, the, that's the hard part, I think, as we, as the internet continues to grow you know, just kind of deciphering what's good and what's mm -hmm. bad and what's, you know, stuff that's really trustworthy. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's really a challenge, and perhaps you can speak to this as well. When you 
not only use the internet, you know, for your personal consumption, but when you actually run sites as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally there are days where if I see a screen for another second, <laughs> I will yeah. break it. Break it. <laughs> right. So, I mean, it's really tough when you have an internet business, and I mean, I'm sure you're on the internet all day, but when it's business and when it's pleasure too, the only thing I can do is sometimes make a conscious yeah. effort mm -hmm. to cut it off. You just have to turn it off. You just have to turn it off, like and say, I'm away. not touching the computer. Um, but but if, you have your, if you have your Blackberry, your iPhone on your hip at the same time, you know, or you're receiving texts all the time, you're always connected. That goes back to my original point when I opened up the show. It's like being in the matrix. You are always connected to. But you have a choice. You can turn off the phone, mm -hmm. or you can but, leave the but phone. But we don't. But we don't. Generally, we don't. You don't. I, I mean, if, if somebody leaves their phone at home, they will turn around and, go and drive 20 miles back <laughs> home Guilty. to or, get their phone. <laughs> you or, know? or when you get to work, you post on Facebook, "I left my home, my yeah. phone at home. <laughs> yeah. Don't right. call so me. Don't call me or send me an email." Exactly. <laughs> and so it's like we're it's never sad. disconnected. I look at you know the younger generation, and imagine. they cannot go if they don't get a, a text or somebody they text somebody and they don't hear back from them within an hour, they're going crazy. They're thinking all of a sudden, people must not like me. You know, they're so connected to these different instruments that connect to either the internet or, you know, communication that they can't even live. But oh, they can't live well, their lives but that, awake. But that goes more for the, the generation of, of instant gratification. Yeah. Well, many of us you are know? like getting like that too. Many oh. of the, the next generation up, the generation Xers and even people above us. Right, because so connected. They, don't, but they don't know life without a microwave or know right. life about, you know, using a toaster oven or to heat up your pizza or, you know, having to put a whole pizza actually in the oven. They don't <laughs> know that life. So right. when you, you know, <laughs> that's if you use the oven. Right. <laughs> um, but if, some some. Right. But if you, once you you know, once that generation continues to get older, that's where it becomes so scary because then there's not gonna be patience, you know, and you might get into, you know, really wars because people are not gonna be patient with how to interact and deal with each other. Mm -hmm. I know that may be kinda too far, but you know. Well, I think what'll end up happening in some cases is that uh, things are still relatively new right now, mm -hmm. and so a lot of emotions are raw. People are still trying to figure out how things work. I mean, I watch people, you know, f become best friends, fight and break up over Twitter. Right, exactly. You know, blocked and unfollowed. Exactly. You know, right. going on my timeline, right. talk to this person. I've blocked and unfollowed them. I hit delete. And I feel like a lot of it's just because the technology's new mm -hmm. and everyone's really excited, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like, um, how m I process commercials differ from my parents, mm -hmm. who grew up in a time right. when you know TV was much slower. You know, and you only had the three networks, right. and so they process mass media like they'll get o they'll get overwhelmed mm -hmm. by certain commercials and programs. Whereas with me, I'm just kind of like you know I grew up watching Sesame Street. I'm used to the rapid fire right. to the point where I can toot it out. Yeah, it almost yeah. doesn't exist, and so I feel like what's going to happen to younger people? They'll become more sophisticated consumers of media. But what that's going to look like, I, you know, I'm not quite sure. I don't think yeah. any of us do. You know, and that's, that's the danger of this. I mean, that's just life in general. You never know what's going to happen. But um, I would like to thank you guys for such a great conversation. Um, we have to go. Um, I want to thank my guests for coming on today, Ms. Jam Donaldson, Ms. Danielle Belton, and Ms. Kima Qualls. Um, if you'd like to learn more about my guests, please take a look at our website, viewsandvibes.com. Until next time, my name is Tariq Omari Walton, and this has been Views and Vibes.